Welcome to Take 5 Around the World. Around the world. My name is Jonathan Cham. And I'm Anthony Bouchon. What are we talking about today? Today, we're going to talk about auto scaling in Google Kubernetes engines. Yes. Awesome. Let's do it. So for today, we have a sample web application. It consists of two containers, a front-end one and a back-end one. The front-end is providing this beautiful UI and is fronted by a load balancer. And on the back-end, uh, it is serving up this metadata about the virtual machine it's running on. And because you know uh, people are so curious <laughs> about the, uh, the information about my uh, back-end virtual machine, um, I imagine that there's going to be a scaling event where a bunch of traffic comes to this web app. Yes. What do I want to do? How do I make this web application harder, better, faster, stronger? Great question. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that, that's where auto scaling comes into play. And so uh, the two things we're going to look at today is horizontal pod auto scaling. That is the act of adding more containers uh, into your Kubernetes cluster and executing uh, more to handle and service more traffic. Second is a cluster auto scaler. So this is the ability to add more virtual machines into your Kubernetes clusters to execute these containers. Because eventually, if you're adding a bunch of containers, you're going to run out of real resources to run them on, right? So two, two levels of auto-scaling. One is at the container slash pod level, and the second one is at the VM slash node level. Exactly that. So let's take a look at HPA first. So what I've actually already done uh, in hopes of getting this under five minutes is created a horizontal pod auto-scaler Kubernetes object. And so I've defined a target CPU utilization across all of the containers running my front end. Uh, right now, there's only one. Uh, so we're starting at one, and uh, we max out at 20 replicas. And so I've actually already generated traffic as well. And so what we're going to do is observe uh, the pod scaling. So we see here, here is my uh, command creating the um, horizontal pod autoscaler, uh, kind of define the metrics I described. And here is a separate load generator container just pinging a bunch of requests to the load balancer uh, that's fronting my uh, front end container. And so if we look at this, we see here that we started with only one replica, but as we def you know, surpass that threshold that I defined of 5%, uh, in under two minutes, Kubernetes was able to add up to four replicas, which has now, over time, brought us down to that target CPU utilization of 5%. Awesome, right? Yeah. You can well, see it go from 46% to 5% after you've auto-scaled the replicas, too, which is really cool. Exactly that. And so what actually happened is a little more magic. Yeah. So I actually started this Kubernetes cluster with only two virtual machines. But you can see now here that my node pool, which is uh, also titled Olympic Size Pool, because ah. I love whimsical Olympic. things, uh, <laughs> I've, uh, it's now running three virtual machines. And the reason that that happened is that uh, we were spinning up more replicas. And eventually, we ran out of uh, allocatable resources to service the request from those new containers. And so Cluster Autoscaler will look at pods being failed or failing to be scheduled because of insufficient CPU or insufficient memory. And I'll say, OK, I guess it's time to spin up a new virtual machine to accommodate those new pods. So TLDR is use both HPA and use Cluster Autoscaler in tandem. Um, because you never know when people will want to look at your application. That's true. And you never know when Take 5 will go viral. Ooh, that's right. One billion users. Exactly. That's, how you, that's <laughs> how you do it. you got to auto-scale your Kubernetes clusters. Exactly that. Any last questions? Nope, I'm good. Thanks, Anthony. Awesome.